The future of dentistry just got a lot more interesting. Woo! We finally have robots that are gonna do our fillings! Uh, no, not quite. I'm talking about stem cells. Now, I previously made a video talking about how scientists are trying to use stem cells to regrow teeth in our mouth so that when we lose an adult tooth, we might be able to grow a new one. So I'm putting a link to that video in the description below if you wanna learn about that. But scientists are actually taking this a step further. Now scientists are learning how to regrow your dental pulp, like the nerve and the tissue in of your tooth. And they're even talking about regrowing your jaw joints and regrowing your gum tissue. You see, all these things we used to think that if there was ever damage, like if you got a cavity where you had a hole inside of your tooth or if you needed a root canal, all these things were irreversible damage and you had to do some sort of synthetic material to fix it. But that might be changing. And this all involves using stem cells from your own body. And this isn't just an idea, this is actually happening in some research labs. So in our lifetime, we could definitely see this happen. Now stem cells sound kind of complicated or kind of like sci-fi, but they're actually really common things and our body uses them every day. Think of stem cells kind of like a blank cell and they can adapt to whatever your body needs them to, whether it be your skin tissue or your nerves or your bone or even your tooth tissue. And obviously we've heard of stem cells being involved in other parts of the body, but now scientists are figuring out how to use stem cells to repair your teeth and the tissues in your mouth. So how does this work? Well, right now it's being done in really high-end labs. But basically the scientists will take tissue or stem cells from your own dental pulp, like the nerve inside of your tooth, or from your jawbone, or even from your fat tissue. And this is being used to fix your gums or regrow your bone that you lost or fix your teeth. It's a new wave of dentistry called regenerative dentistry. And if this comes into light and actually starts getting used in standard practice, it would totally revolutionize the way that dentistry is done. So for example, let's start with a root canal. How would that change? So typically you need a root canal when you have a really big cavity. Basically you have a really big hole inside of your tooth where bacteria are getting in and eating away at your tooth until they get into the middle of your tooth, which is where your nerve or your dental pulp is. Once you have bacteria that get in here, then pretty much the only way to save the tooth is with a root canal. That's when you have to clean out that nerve and disinfect it, and then put a sealer in there to basically block off any bacteria from getting in there. But a regenerative root canal is totally different because when you do a traditional root canal, that nerve is basically gone. So that tooth is basically dead. So that means you wouldn't be able to feel like hot or cold or anything on the tooth. But now with a regenerative root canal, it's actually healing the tooth from the inside out. So here the dentist would still disinfect the tooth, but not totally kill it. And then this part gets really interesting. They would use a special medicine to actually trigger some bleeding inside of that tooth, inside of that pulp. Now I know this sounds kind of strange, but it's actually done on purpose. That bleeding will eventually clot. It'll form like a natural blood clot. And then here, it'll kind of act like a sponge. And this is where it starts pulling in the stem cells from the nearby areas. Those stem cells can then grow into new nerve tissue and new blood vessels. And these are the blood vessels and nerve cells that you need to keep the tooth alive. So it literally is effectively healing the tooth from the inside out. This would be way better than a traditional root canal if this actually worked. Because don't get me wrong, root canals are a great option to save a tooth. But that's the whole point. The goal is to save the tooth. And the thing is, in dentistry, nothing lasts forever. Everything has a timeline. So even if you do a small filling on a tooth, and over time you're gonna be chewing on that filling, and then other things are gonna to happen to it, and that filling will never be as strong or as good as your natural tooth structure. So over time, that filling or that crown you get or that root canal you get might fail. So everything is just basically buying time to get as many years as possible out of this tooth in your mouth. So instead, if we can just regenerate the tooth from the inside out, we won't have to remove as much tooth structure, we won't have to remove the pulp and the nerve inside of the tooth, we'll keep the tooth alive, and this can theoretically last a whole lot longer. Now let's talk about jaw pain, especially from TMJ. A lot of people say they have TMJ, or they have like this jaw pain, but in reality, everyone has a TMJ. A TMJ is just your temporal mandibular joint, or this jaw joint that sits right by your ears. This is basically the joint that connects your jaw to your skull, and it helps open and close your mouth. Over time, some people might grind or clench their teeth, and this can kind of wear out that jaw joint a lot faster, because the more you use it, the more it can get inflamed. And this can also happen for other reasons, like if your bite is off, if you're not like able to close as well as you should. Whatever the case is, if this joint starts to get inflamed, it can cause a lot of pain, it can start causing like popping and clicking, and this can be really uncomfortable. Now sometimes we can make what's called a bite splint. A bite splint is basically a mouth guard that just goes over either your top or your bottom arch, and then every time you grind or you clench your teeth, 
or if you're like putting a lot of stress on your teeth, it basically deflects those forces. So it doesn't let you put all that pressure on those teeth and it relieves that pressure from your jaw joint. And this can help a lot with the symptoms. Now sometimes this isn't enough, but sometimes people need to get like a surgery or something. And this is what the researchers are studying. They're testing a specific treatment called stem gel. It's basically this gel that is made up of these stem cells that's injected directly into that jaw joint. And when it goes in there, those stem cells will help rebuild the cartilage that's missing in that joint. Think of that cartilage as kind of like as a cushion for the joint. So instead of going bone on bone, which can be really painful, which happens at other joints in our body, now we have the cartilage to protect it. And speaking of other parts of the body, the same treatment is even being done on the knees. So yeah, we're not just talking about the mouth here because the whole body is related. So if you can have stem cells that work in one part of the body, why not other parts of the body? Now I know I mentioned before and I mentioned in my other video about actually regrowing a missing tooth with stem cells. Now this sounded like science fiction for a long time, but it's sounding more and more promising every day. Now I will say that this research is still not fully there yet because we can create a tooth-like structure, we just don't know the direction and the shape of the tooth. So it might not look exactly like a tooth even though it's tooth structure. But I am confident that one day we're gonna get it figured out and then one day you might have to go into your dentist and instead of getting a tooth like an implant or something to replace your tooth, you might just get an injection and then eventually grow a new tooth. And it's not just about re growing your teeth, stem cells can also be done to regrow the supporting structures of your teeth. That means the bones that surround your teeth and the gums that surround it. You see, a lot of times with gum disease, your gums start to pull back and you start to lose bone that surrounds your teeth. We often think that this is permanent, that we're never gonna get this bone back, we're never gonna get these gums back, and this is actually the number one reason that people end up in dentures, because their teeth get so loose from losing all that bone that they have to lose all their teeth. But now, researchers are using a mix of 3D printed scaffolds, blood proteins, and stem cells to actually regrow our bone and our gum tissues. These scaffolds are basically like a map. They kinda act like a skeleton that tells our body where and what to grow. Okay, now how realistic is this treatment? Like, is this actually going to be done on humans? Well, yes, because it's actually being done on live patients right now. Now keep in mind everything's still in the testing phase, so we don't know how well everything's going to work out yet, but it's really promising that we're starting the testing now and then let's see what's going to happen. What I'd really be curious about is one, like if this works, how well does it last, like long term? Because the problem with all these things is it sounds really promising, but it's really hard to get long-term studies, and it takes so long. No one wants to wait that long. And also, how realistic is it gonna be that an average consumer is gonna be able to get this? Because most dental treatments are really expensive. And if these treatments are not covered by insurance, then how much is it gonna cost? At the same time, researchers are also gonna need funding to make sure that they can do all the proper testing. And they're also gonna have to figure out how to make this scalable, because doing it on one person in a lab might be doable, but now think about doing it for a million people. That's a little different. So just understand that there are some hurdles out there, but that being said, it sounds very promising because all this stuff was things we didn't even think about when I was in dental school, and that wasn't even that long ago. And all these things that researchers are helping figure out in the mouth, people are also doing the same things for the rest of our body. So that helps with like wound healing and potentially even regrowing organs. So we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. And I will see you in the next video. Your brush you're flossing, you're avoiding sugar, but you're still getting cavities. Here's the truth, it might be from something you would never expect. So in this video, I'm gonna break down seven of the most surprising things that are actually causing your cavities. So stick around, because even doing one of these things could be sabotaging your teeth. So let's get into it. Number one is mouth.